Hello again, my name is Tim Baldridge. Today we're going to talk a little bit about logic programming. Now when we say logic programming, what we're talking about is defining sets of variables and defining relationships between those variables and then having the, pro um, the program, the engine, the logic engine, solve um, certain questions about those variables. If you remember back to high school, um, algebra would have things such as x and y, and we can say x equals y, or x is less than y, or x is y plus 1. That's kind of a form of logic programming, if we were to write a program that could solve that. Um, it's, it's, a specific, it's a specific area of it, and I don't know that we'll dig into that aspect of it, but we can think of that analogy um, uh, today uh, to help us understand this a little better. So first of all, we need to define logic vars. Now, the example I'm using today is actually uh, from a paper called New Canron, which is kind of the minimalist version of logic programming that Mini Canron and CoreLogic are based off of. Um, we are going to implement it a little bit differently today, hopefully a little bit simpler than uh, what you may have seen in these other programs, but this will kind of give you an understanding of the basics behind logic programming. So to start with, we need a way to define logic variables, which is that X and Y um, that we'll use to refer to um, uh, certain aspects of our program and we'll, we'll uh, use logic variables to define relationships and stuff. So today we're going to uh, just use symbols for these logic variables. So if we um, create a function called LVAR, we can have a um, function that takes no arguments and we'll just have it call itself with an empty string and then um, if it's given a name, we'll do gen sim of name. So now if we uh, pull this in here, we see that we can do lvar uh, foo, and we get the symbol foo1206. And let's put a little underscore in here just uh, for fun uh, so that the two parts are a little more well-defined. There we go. So why do we do it this way? Well, as it turns out that a lot of times these, ver these um, logic variables need to be singletons um, for, this, for the algorithms to work correctly. So every time we call LVAR, we're gonna get a completely unique named symbol. And then we give the ability to give it a name just to make debugging a little bit easier. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to define something called walk. And, um, so now that we have an LVAR, we ha want to have a few more predicates. We want to say LVAR, um, and this is going to be V, and then we're going to call this um, uh, symbol V. Now in an actual system, we would probably want to be able to use symbols as data, and so we would not define LVARs in terms of symbols, but we'll do it this way just to simplify it today. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to construct a system that takes a string, a list of substitutions, so um, a lazy stream of substitutions, and um, finds, like we, we, we could, that stream will represent the list of possible answers up to this point in the program. So this may sound a little bit weird, um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna, um, we're gonna have a hash map that'll be an LVAR to a value and then LVAR2 to another value. Or we'd have an LVAR to another LVAR. So this is, this is how the relationships between these logic variables are defined. So the guts of all this is a function called unify. That given a substitution map and two LVARs, we'll call them U and V, we're going to attempt to unify them. Now this unify can either return a new substitution map that has these logic variables added to it, or it'll return nil in the case that it, it's proven that something you fed into it cannot be true. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to walk both of u and v, and we're going to define walk in a little bit. Walk s and u, and v is walk s of v. We'll define those functions in a little bit. And then we're gonna have a cond. Now, if u is an LVAR and v is an LVAR and they are equal, they are the same logic variable, then there's nothing left to do because they're exactly the same thing and everything is equal to itself in these logic programs. So we're gonna return the substitution map 
unedited. Now, if the, let's see here, um, if u is an LVAR, then we're going to associate into our map u and v. So this, this will create a relationship between u and v. So u is an LVAR and u and v um, get added to that. If v is an LVAR, then we're going to um, do this so we put backwards, v and u. And we'll, we'll, we'll play with this in just a second and we'll, we'll show you how it works. So else, if uh, equals u and v, then we return, um, let's see here, uh, then we just return s. No, we'll do it like this. All right, so how does this work? Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to define walk. So walk is going to go into our substitution map and try to find an answer for a logic variable. And if it doesn't find the answer, then it will re just return the logic variable. So given S and U, what we're going to do is we're going to say let PR be uh, and LVAR U, then uh, actually we can write this a little bit differently, uh, but we'll, we'll uh, write it the way it is in the paper here first. But what we're going to do is we're going to get in S U. And because this is a, um, yeah, we can do this a little bit differently here. So let's, uh, let's simplify this and make it look a little bit more closure-like. If let PR get U, um, here we get uh, U out of S, and then we're gonna say, if LVAR PR, then we're going to recur S and PR. Otherwise, we're going to return PR and then return PR. All right, so this should work. And we need to add LVARs in. All right, here we go. Okay, so we have our two our functions here. Now let's see if they work. We may have to debug this a little bit. So if we give it an empty substitution map and we say unify S with 42, uh, we should have gotten that out and we didn't. Uh, so let's see, let's, let's define walk. Walk, if we walk um, LVAR S42, um, wrong number, there we go. Ah, because this here, uh, this is what we want here. There we go. So the problem is here is that uh, PR was undefined. Uh, so let's, let's do that again. Okay. So if we have an empty empty substitution map and we look in that substitu substitution map for S and S does not exist, then we just get back S. If, however, we were to do this, S is L of R S and we do S, we look for S and S is 42, then we get 42 out. If we have another sub, um, another value here, let's see, v, L var v, um, that works as it did before. But now what we can do is something like this, and say v is 42, and s is v. Then we get 42 out, right? Because it's walked and said, okay, what is s? Well, s is v, and what is v? v is 42, so we return 42. Now, this should work. If we say unify L var s to 42, then it creates a new substitution that has assigned s to 42. If, however, we say L var v, then it says s is now equal to v. If we have um, something that cannot be true, for example, 1 and 2, we get false back. And if we have 1 and 1, we get our empty map back. Okay, so now that that all is working, we can start to build something a little bit more unique. So what this allows us to do is we can create these LVARs and start to create relations between them. 
But often we want to join several rules together. In fact, we don't even have any rules yet, or goals as they're called. So now what we need to do is define the most basic goal. What we're gonna do is define this goal called equals equals, and we're gonna go up here and exclude um, equals equals from, um, from closure core so we don't accidentally import uh, overwrite that function. So we have A and B, and what these goals are, are functions that take a single argument and return a sequence of substitutions, okay? So fn a uh, s, this is our input argument. And then what we're going to do is say if let v unify s, a, and b. And then we return v, otherwise return an empty list, okay? So if we define this now, eh, we're gonna get some complaints about that, but whatever. So we have equals equals one and two, and we run that and we get this function back. Now, if we give it a substitution like we did before, all this is really doing is um, calling unify. So either we get an empty list back, there is no possible set of answers that this will succeed for, or we get a sub substitution map back, or we can do L of R, uh, foo, and we get back the substitution. Now that works, but oftentimes we don't just want to execute one rule, we want to execute many rules. And we want to basically say a logical and between two rules. So the first thing we're going to do is define a conjunction of two rules. So we're going to name this dash conj, not to be confused with the other conj the enclosure core. Um, a, if we only have one goal, then we're just going to return A. If we have two goals, A and B, then what we need is a function. Every one of these functions need to, um, goals need to return a function. And given an S, we say for A ret A of S, and then when A, A ret to filter out false values, B ret is B of A ret, and then when b ret, we return b ret. So what you see here, we've basically pipelined. We go through everything in a, filter out the nulls, we put all of that into b, um, call b for every one of those, and then filter out the empty results, and we return a sequence, a lazy seek here. So can, can, we, um, can we prove this works? Let's see, so we have conj, so let's say let a l bar a b l bar b, and now what we can do is say this dash conj equals a forty two equals b a, and if we run this, we get a function back. So let's uh, go here and let's do an empty substitution and we get back a substitution map that says B is 42 and A is also 42. So here we start to see this logic programming. Now we should be able to even specify these in a reverse order. If we specify in a reverse order, we say A is 42 and B is A and A therefore is 42. So that's kind of the cool thing about these logic programs is we can, we can specify them in any order. So con, uh, conjoin or conj is a logical and, but what about a logical or? Well, it turns out that or is actually pretty simple. But before we get to that, let's uh, define a multiple arity case here of uh, this function. Uh, so a, b, and more. And we're just going to conj, uh, let's see here, we're going to conj a, and apply conj b more. So now we should be able to have multiple rules um, and we can, we can do that here, equals a one and two, and this will actually fail. Um, uh, let's see here, because we don't want to use the closure conj, we want to use our conj, so if we run that, there we go. So if we have no results at all, if it doesn't work at all, then we just get a empty list back. Okay, so now let's do or, logical or. So if you think about this as streams, right? We have a stream of results coming out of A 
and we put each one of them one at a time into B, and each one of those returns a stream of results. All of these things return lazy sequences. So what is the idea? What would we do to, to, to um, concatenate two lazy sequences together in Clojure? Well, it's simple. It's concat. So logical or, or disjunction, um, is simply uh, fn s and what we want to do is we are going to uh, I believe we want map cat for this well let's let's do the, the single version first a and b and what we would do is concat a s with b s that works right right so now what we can actually do is we can change this into a map cat so let's do goals and goals and say map cat fn and this is our goal and goal of s goals so for each one of our goals we're going to um, call goal and hand it s and then we're going to call map cat to concatenate all of those together into one large uh, version okay so now what happens if we do this well, we can come up here and say dash disjunction and say all of that or equals b11. So what we get now is only one result, b is 11, because this first goal failed and returned an empty set. Now, if we remove this, what we get is a is 42, b is a, or b is just 11. Right? So that right there is the basics of logic programming. We can define these rules and we can concatenate these rules to create all sorts of programs. Um, we could enhance our unify to work with lists or, or sets of numbers um, and, and in multiple different ways. But this is the basics of it all. We have conjoin, disjoin, and etc. Now, obviously, it's just really hard to understand the results of this program, and we might want to create some things that would allow us to easy, more easily create, uh, for instance, uh, logic variables, or maybe would pull our answers out of the map when we're done. And we'll, uh, we'll do that next time. The two uh, macros for that are called run, which uh, allow you to specify logic variables, and it will pull them out of, uh, and just hand you the answers and, instead of handing you this map. There's also fresh, which is a lot like this let. Here we have this let with a conjunction um, here. Uh, that's what we were doing before, right? Is we have the let with the conj in the body. Um, but with fresh, we would be able to just do a and b and say dash conj. Or we, we just say equals uh, b a and equals a 42. Um, that requires writing it as a macro. But uh, it's pretty nice that we can do all of this without ever writing a single macro. And actually, without ever doing a whole lot of really weird uh, monadic stuff. A lot of this is just standard closure, um, uh, lazy list um, uh, um, functions. So hopefully that helps you. I, I wish I had seen a tutorial like this years ago because uh, I haven't un uh, never understood logic programming for the longest time, uh, simply because there's no, no tutorials that walk through it this simply. I'll put a list to uh, a link to the Mu Canron um, paper in uh, the description of this talk. Check it out, read it. They use a slightly different method that uses um, uh, monads instead of lazy sequences, but the principles are basically the same, and hopefully that'll be helpful to you as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and hope to see you back soon.